This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by Nectar Sleep, the last mattress you'll ever need. Get free sheets, mattress protector, and pillows with code GWFIT. Wild Alaskan Company, healthy, affordable, convenient fish sent right to your door. Save $25 off with code BIGFISH25. Purity Coffee, organic certified, high in antioxidants, and free of contaminants. Save 20% off with code MMA20. Newsist, vegan nutrition products. Save 15% off with code FIT10. Defense Soap, everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 597. 597. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Griffith, MMA Show. Bye, my fans, former fans. Walk the line between serious and ridiculous. What are you drinking over there? Straight up coffee at fucking uh, nine o'clock. A little, a little uncaffeinated tea called uh, stress relief because I need some stress relief. Does it got like chamomile in it? Yeah, uh, crazy. I don't know. It doesn't say. It's a yogi. It has a nice message. It says, "If you do anything out of sheer compassion, you will never be wrong." It says right here on the little label. So they always have oh. little notes on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you but, go. It's like Confucius says. Uh, right. So, if you fuck the lady in the butt. She will love you forever and ever. <laughs> Thank did, you. Did, did, did Confucius say that? <laughs> Always, every day. 32 times on Sunday. Speaking it's like of that Sunday. thing in uh, college, you have to say in the bedroom at, after every single one of these you read, like the um, fortune things. Yeah, yeah, fortune cookie, uh, fortunes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, save those. <sighs> did you watch any playoff football? Let's start there. Yeah, I watched a little bit. Um I, I, you know, the Eagles game wasn't much of a game. So, yeah, it was unfortunate for the 49ers. Like, talk about having the worst luck. <laughs> like, every, every your third stringer then. gets broken on the first series. You have to put your fourth stringer in. Then you have Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey, I can never say that right. The running back is their fifth quarterback. He's looking at the playbook. And then they finally just say, oh, fuck it. Just put the third stringer back in and hand the ball off. So, and it was another one of the games where the officiating was kind of fucked up because Philadelphia has that one pass for in like the guy looked like he caught it with one arm and brought it in, but dropped it. I thought that was a catch. It hit the it hit the ground. Totally not a catch. And I hate then, that rule. I really do. And, and then they fucking run up and get a playoff. But how the fuck is that even legal? How do we have a a sport where? A catch isn't the catch, and then you can just go out, run a playoff quickly. It's like you're cheating. And, and like, that's the rule. You can do it, but at, at this level in the playoffs, we're not going to review some shit. Like, that That game didn't piss me off, but the Kansas City one was so egregious with the officiating. Do over! Do over! Like, when have you ever seen a fucking do over? Cause it hit the <laughs> the camera thing or whatever, right? No, no. There there was a play where, like, the clock was a different time than the refs wanted. Oh, and oh, right. Sorry, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, and then the the fucking just let Kansas City get off another play. I'm like, are you fucking kidding? They just ran a play and had a negative result, and then you let them redo it, like do over, and just like it was so egregious the way they called the game against them and i i did no skin in a game i just i want a fair game and i feel like the refs are not playing fair to some of the teams i mean we saw it all year with the bears but fuck you're in the playoffs yeah. like just just let them play it out like either you're gonna you be aggressive and call shit on both teams but you can't just hammer one team in the submission yeah. and granted they did do a couple of late hits on Mahomes out of bounds and that's on those players yeah <laughs> like he's already those, banged up enough that's yeah i mean that, those weren't i mean those were good penalties to call like those were correct but i mean yeah some of the intentional grounding some of the holds like just you gotta let them play and and not let the refs dictate who's gonna win or not win and I don't know. Do you think it's because of all the betting that the refs are, it seems like they're getting worse and worse. 
Well, I've always thought football involved. was fixed somehow in some weird way because sometimes team this weird stuff happens in the game that somehow the they make the line or don't make the betting line and it's like oh why did they go for two there that's weird right oh, like, I don't know why they went for two <laughs> that doesn't make any sense <laughs> what are okay. we doing oh, and then they missed it They're like weird and somehow they didn't make the spread and it's yeah. like yeah I don't know any predictions for the Super Bowl what do you think is going to happen well, I'm trying to think which team do I hate less, and I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess it depends. Like, do you have a healthy Patrick Mahomes? Like, I think probably not. That high ankle sprain thing is no joke. Yeah, it looked like he was struggling the whole game to get through it. Yeah. And hopefully, what does he have two weeks now to recover? Maybe enough. I don't know. Well, if I remember, like, Terrell Owens um, played in a Super Bowl, right? For was it Dallas, where he had like a blown out ankle, and then they did some crazy procedure on him for a couple of weeks like he was like going to the hyperbaric chamber and you know probably having all the good vitamins mm -hmm. and somehow he played and did well so i mean yeah. I'm, I'm he's gonna play i just wonder if he's gonna hold up through the to whole what game. level yeah yeah because i mean he's still passed well but he didn't really run no much. he just like i think there was just that one play one or two where you got those roughing the passer play, uh, yeah, fucking calls because they're he's trying to run out of bounds and the other team's just like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, man. We've had I enough of this. I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. I, I, I think it's gonna be a barn burner, but I, 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 think I hope the so. E Eagles will take it probably is my prediction, uh, by maybe touchdown or two. Mm. I think it'll be a fun game. It's close. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I, I like a close, high scoring game. Not a lot of defense, a lot of offense. The barn burner. Like, yeah, I think I, I might have to work for can root for Kansas City because I think the Philly Philadelphia fans are just trash. Like yeah. they're probably the worst fans ever. So lots of fights in the Philly stands all the time. Yeah, they, they are just crazy. Yeah, and you see it on how they celebrate when they win. I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> slow down. They have like little kids going up to the other team, like, hey, high five, and then. The guy who goes to a high five on the little kid's like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. like, what? like, that's good to teach your son to go up to like someone on the opposite team fans to do that. Like, you're lucky that guy just didn't tee off on you. You know, it's called respect and no one has it anymore. It's because everyone's fucking hammered at the games, you know? Yeah. Too hammered. Can't yep. even stand up. No, it's a problem. So it anyway, is. uh, let's talk. A uh, little MMA action, a little Combat power sports. slap. Yeah, right. power slap coming at you. Episode two. So I sat down to watch episode two. I made it a whole five minutes into the show. And I'm like, I can't do this. I fucking can't do this. Mm -hmm. So I had to tap out. Like, it's just, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> I just came to the conclusion, this is fucking stupid. Initially, I was semi into it. And then it's just, it's so much just waiting and waiting and like, oh, this guy slaps that guy. This guy slaps that guy. The interesting is thing is that last week, remember I was telling you about the table in the middle, how it was kind of a problem because it was so big mm -hmm. that like, if you had a, a good reach advantage, you, you, you're, you have the advantage versus the short guys. So this week they actually made a smaller table so instead of a big round table in the middle they made it more of like an oval but like a thin oval now so like okay. from that standpoint it made sense and then the other thing i was wondering because when these guys get slapped and fall down their safety mat is just two guys behind them and I saw Forrest Griffin was one of the guys like th their job is just to try to catch the guy before he like bounces his skull off of whatever that surface is. Like it looks hard, but if these guys are going to get KO'd, why can't they just put a mattress and some pillows down <laughs> and let them just go to just sleep? To bed, Cause I think that. that would be more interesting. Like if they get knocked out and then you fall onto a mattress with pillows, would that encourage you to stay down or encourage you to try to get up. Maybe you should get extra points as the guy who did the KOing, depending on what position the guy. Yeah. Like, like you get a finishing bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Funny. It's the things they should try. I think that that would be cool. But again, it's, they're trying to run it like the ultimate fighter show where mm -hmm. like these guys, some guys automatically got into the house. Some guys are slapping their way, trying to get into the house, but 
uh then they're just showing like the highlights from the week and like oh we're just back to we're drinking we're fighting in the house and like personally i want no business or no part of that so Mm -hmm. i'm tapping out and then i heard that they're also going to try to do a fucking pay-per-view oh wow who's gonna pay for who's gonna pay for this well that's the thing i i'm like when i'm looking at this now i'm going out of business in one season out of business the whole fucking league but having Mm -hmm. said that there was a rumor that the ratings for the second show were up 40 percent from last week Oh wow! Which would make sense because that's what I was thinking is that they kind of buried it because all the shit with Dana and his wife, they mm-hmm. probably didn't promote it a lot and kind of buried it. And then this week it got a lot of promotion. And even now, like if you go to the UFC's YouTube page, they have like a bunch of highlights on that page too. So, okay. I, oh. I can't get behind it. I'm glad you're the guinea pig for us or the canary in the coal mine or whatever. I, I think the UFC jumped a shark with all like this whole thing is just like stupid. It's so dumb. On many levels. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I, yeah. Unless they miraculously change the rules where it somehow gets more interesting. I mean, I just I don't know how you make I, it more interesting. It's just, <laughs> it's just like sure. you slap me, we wait and see what happens. I slap you. It's just it's so slow. That's the problem. Yeah. And then 30 seconds to slap, 30 seconds to recover. And I, I mean, it would be more interesting if, you know, I want to see ladies do it naked. And I liked what you brought last week with the ladies slapping each other's asses. Like that's way mm-hmm. cooler. Mm-hmm. But maybe there's an in between where it's ladies in bikinis slapping each other. I don't know. Then I think there's an element of drama. At least I'm excited for ladies in bikinis. I don't know. There needs to be a different element, and right now I feel it's lacking. So it's hard to say. Hard to say. Mm-hmm. What else is happening out there? Uh, let me see. There's a bunch, but the the one the one piece of news that I found really interesting is that Bella Mir, Frank Mir's daughter. I don't know if you read about this. Um, first fighter to sign a name, image, and likeness, likeness deal with the UFC. She's actually. Um, the ambassador of this she's a freshman at the University of Iowa and if you remember I think it was in 21 or 20 um, the NCAA like started allowing mm-hmm. people to like make money off their likeness in college yeah um, so here let me share this is her little tweet by the UFC I say good for her she's uh you know part of the UFC as an NIL ambassador she allows herself to be sponsored by them and uh, make some money uh, as her wrestling pedigree goes and the you know maybe future mma fighter female mma fighter i'm not sure not really clear I, to me it's a it's exciting but i'm also wondering if this is some weird way to lock them up early bef- and it's like you know like well the record, does she retain industry. her rights that's the question because if you sign a ufc contract you lose all of those rights they own your likeness in perpetuity so maybe they're going in the right direction because it sounds like those deals, you still have your rights. They're just Mm -hmm. paying you to use them. Correct. So, Uh, and apparently from what Dana white was saying is that this is, she's the ambassador and they're looking to do a whole lot more of this. So there's some vehicle for making income for the UFC on this. So uh, I'm curious to see how this plays out, but good for her. So, you know, yeah. I mean, that's a first for sure. And hopefully it, it somehow it translates to fighters being able to have their own likeness again. It's never going to happen. Or something. Or get paid. <laughs> like, think about, too, like all the fighters who don't get any money for having their likeness in the UFC video game, right? Right. Good point. Like, fuck, point. man. You Can you, you flip me a little something, something? I'm sure those games are semi-successful. I mean, video games, I think, are the biggest money-making thing with the exception to some of the biggest movies because they rival movies usually i mean you look yes. at fucking grand theft auto like how many quadrillions of dollars like it's to the point that they don't even put out a new one in like over 10 years because they're fucking just ching ching we just keep making so much money there's no sense to put out something new like I, we may not even have a new one in like two consoles like i don't remember what the last console was that Grand Theft Auto, what is it, five 
came out on gta 5 xbox the previous xbox this series the xbox one maybe one i think one yeah might have even been the 360 it might have been the 360 i don't fucking know it's been so long because i don't remember a life cycle of uh xbox if it's seven years or something but anyway it's ridiculous Mm -hmm. uh i saw this other league let me post this this is blaine henry he was talking about you know, everyone complaining about the power slap. He's saying Dana White could have started a Mongolian cow bone breaking league, which would have been amazing. We got, we got some video here. This sounds insane. So apparently, these guys take a bone and then they try to break it. How? So like, I think they're warming up here. So I think you they try like a it's like a hit and then a swing. It's like boom, bam. So he's like warming up back i don't oh. quite understand what we're doing here but what is that a human bone what kind of bone is this i don't know it seems like a parlor trick but i, I can appreciate the whole is it like breaking bricks i don't know whatever? do you get like uh finesse points here you probably do i bet you it looks cool yeah, it's weird. <laughs> and that's what we're about. We're about bringing you weird Mongolian right. bone breakers. Mongolian bone breakers. That's right. That's what I want to be known as. <laughs> that's a good nickname. The Mongolian bone breaker or ball buster. Mm-hmm. Whatever gets in your way. And the other thing I was thinking about, too, I know we've talked about this, is that why doesn't the UFC do something fun like a skills competition or because you know thinking about like all the other leagues have some kind of an all-star oh i know what like you mean. a pro but, bowl but like pro bowl skills like what like yeah yeah so like like you have all-star weekend for uh hockey so then they're doing like uh fastest skater uh accuracy hardest shot like um baseball probably i don't know what are we doing just a home run derby football's got a pro bowl but then they also are doing like some kind of skills competition with like quarterbacks Passing, catching running yeah like let's basketball do has a dunk contest you know, yeah three, three point, point. Contest. Yeah. sure so. like let's do something in the ufc like you could do the hardest punch hardest kick fastest punch fastest kick uh and do it by weight class too Ooh, wanna, like, you could do like a specific submission and see how much torque someone can generate yeah, from, fuck from, yeah. from, from like like in like a frank imagine like whatever any submission you can do and you have to create how much torque can a human you know do i don't know how you'd set that up but i'd be curious to know like how how yeah or even force. just like a rear naked choke who's got the best squeeze like yeah squeeze the shit out of this it's like when they were doing that with the watermelons and getting their squeeze on like fuck yeah man i want to see like who's or even if you want to just go old school and throw a bench press like basic shit in there fucking not that you're gonna be running a 40 yard dash but some kind of speed competition or that other thing where around the guy like the around the world that the the uh wrestlers do where you where there's oh yeah someone standing up and you have to go around they did that on the tough show right yeah yeah, like I think they like blew out everything because I think it was <laughs> Joe Stevenson and someone else like just fucking kept going and going and like him in a heavyweight and like they blew out like all their muscles or something. <laughs> yeah, and then they had to fight and it wasn't good. Uh, they should also do that hand eye coordination with the speed where like a light shows up and then you got to hit that light. Oh yeah, like on a whole board like boom 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 boom. Reaction to time. the fastest and most accurate. Yeah. How about a, how about a CTE test? Who has the most CTE? That's fine. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have oh. one. I I don't want to say it. It's so mean. Oh man. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't fucking do it. Don't do it. Um, let's, let's right. talk about our sponsors. Oh, great. We can do that. Um, shall we talk about Manscaped? Yes. Manscaped now selling beard products. In case you that's didn't right. know, we've been telling you since the start of the year. That's right. They're once again, revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new beard hedger pro kit from a beard trim to a fresh shave. The technology behind the beard hedger pro kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. 
Whether you like it short or long, it doesn't matter. You can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com slash MMA nuts for 20% off and free shipping. That's right. It's time to tame your mane. No one likes a weird beard, man. So say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. That's right. And get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash MMA nuts. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash MMA nuts. Manscaped beard hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Genius. That's right. Chop everything down. Yes. So it's all about <laughs> speaking what it's all about. Uh, this episode is also sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Uh, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedrooms. Listen up, bluechew.com. That's right. And they are a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Best part, it's all done online. No visits to the doctor office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. You can get everything on the internets. That's what it's all about. You want everything on the internets. Uh, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. <laughs> Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code MMA Nuts at checkout. You just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code MMA Nuts to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. That's right. And we are also sponsored by our good friends at Miracle Brand. Whether you want to get more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there is one thing that will help, and that's better sleep. With Miracle Made Sheets, you can tap into the power of self-cooling temperature regulation, which has been shown to improve sleep quality by up to 34%. That's right. And self-quality, here you go, self-cooling properties for better quality sleep using silver-infused fabrics originally developed by NASA. Miracle Made Sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. And hey, I'm actually... I think I changed my sheets within the four week mark. No issues at four weeks. Very hygienic. Mm -hmm. I got to say, I've been using them for a couple months now and um, sleeping better. It's much cooler. And if you want to do the same, you can go to trymiracle.com slash MMA and uh, try it today. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can save over 40% and be sure to use 40%. our 40%. 40 That's crazy. <laughs> How do they even keep the lights on? It's not. I don't know. <laughs> and you can use our promo code MMA at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it's back with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash MMA and use the code MMA to claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash MMA to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. That's right. Woo woo. Back to the show. Back to the show. What do I want to talk about? Um, I got a bunch of things. Know. So um good. I'm gonna well, make a drink. Uh, oh, okay, good. Uh then I'll say some. Okay, so we know that I think it's this weekend, Bellator 290 is happening, right? We got the um Ryan Bader and Fedor Emelianenko making the his Fedor. Re <laughs> is it a retirement fight. <laughs> it's his last fight. These two met. That's what like, he keeps saying every fucking five years. Gonna roll, roll him out on a wheelchair. He's fifty-five <laughs> years old, so fucking slinging bombs. Yeah, they fought in twenty nineteen, and I think Bader won pretty quickly, handily. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that got me to think. You know, a couple things. Like there was a, uh, I think I read a news blast somewhere on a tweet from one of the major websites. They were talking about who is the greatest heavyweight of all time? And I, I kind of wanted to get your feedback on this because I think you got to put this gentleman, Mr. Fedor, in the in the running for that. Sure. But I'm wondering, like, in your opinion, like globally in the history of heavyweights, like who do you think? It, give me your top three and then let's discuss. What do you think? Tim Sylvia. Oh, gee. <laughs> Anybody uh, that wears his fucking heavyweight belt while he goes grocery shopping, number one goat at heavyweight of all time. Okay. 
Fair enough. Tim's number Lillian. two. Fedor. Not Kane Velasquez. Probably Fedor. I'd go. I could go Fedor at number two, even though Fedor beat Tim Sylvia. Yes. Uh, it's probably it was uh, a blasphemy fight. I, I think Tim won that one, even though it got KO'd. Um, number three is probably going to be John Jones, depending Fedor's- upon how many. Oh, times yeah. he fights at heavyweight. <clears throat> oh, you're, you're <laughs> that's like, the caveat. You're in the, you're in the future. Okay, <laughs> I know. <laughs> he hasn't had a fight yet. These are at heavyweight. I, I see. I but see. It, it's not Kane Velasquez. It, that, that's yeah. the tough part. I don't know who three is. What about Stipe? I'll never vote for him. <laughs> he, yeah. I mean, he's got a case for sure because I think didn't he have the most three title, title defenses, defenses at yes. heavyweight, which is fucking hard, if not impossible, because there's just too much fucking power, too much fucking power, and you make one mistake and you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's a tough discussion. We're, it might, you know, might Frank Mir could potentially be in there too because. Before he had that accident, he was wrecking people. And I think he has the most broken limbs out of fucking anybody. Oh, yeah. Like, remember sure. all the people shit he's broke? Lots Tim Sylvia is one of them. <laughs> he broke his whole fucking thing. Yeah. It ripped his shoulder off. Yeah. I put, I probably put Frank in there too. Frank's up there. I, I think you're right. It's a division that is really, really dangerous and it's hard, to, but I don't know. I, you might be onto something with John Jones. If he gets, if he wins and then starts going on a run, I could see him being the guy that does four, five, six, you know, title defenses at heavyweight. But I just think it's difficult because it's like it's so anything, hard. Anything can happen. It's a lot of weight and power and muscle and just you know, you you never know. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're asking me for current. Ch- heavyweights sure. that are not john jones who are just turning heavyweight <laughs> and hasn't even won once <laughs> i think for me it's clearly between stipe and fedor and I, i'm gonna have to go ahead and say probably the fedor because he's been like iconic for so long sure. i'm not saying he's still the world beater he was once but that right hand was ridiculous for some time i mean he was knocking fools out with that thing remember arlovsky oh my god arlovsky was winning that fight until he, he decided was. to go airborne <laughs> then Trader's like they went to Bing. fucking sleep i'm like what the hell are you doing you're piecing him up <laughs> i gotta go airborne on this motherfucker uh, like oh chin first yeah that was that was brutal it was bad but yeah fader even has a sweater of what ultimate victory or something yeah who else has a fucking sweater i have that sweater i never wear it anymore but i have it it's in my closet i'm like i don't know when i would wear this i should wear it just put it on the wall it's like i have uh, a blackhawks jersey down here on the wall yeah i rarely wear my blackhawks jerseys anymore yeah Yeah. it's a cool sweater i still have it good so i like it what else is happening uh, I got a UFC card this weekend. Uh oh, really? A lot of not good fights, but I'll display it anyway. Lewis versus how do you say it? Spivak. Oh, this is the one that's at like three in the morning, right? Because of, because <laughs> of the, right? <laughs> <It's midnight>? <laughs> <laughs> that's because of, because oh, of the weird time zone yeah. thing. Because it was supposed to be in Korea. Fucking cool. I'm sure these fighters are real happy about this. Uh-huh. So it's like you have a heavyweight, a light heavyweight, a heavyweight. A pie weight, a welter weight, and then you go into no picture, no picture, no picture, no picture, no picture. Five guys with no picture tells you about the quality of the card. So, yeah, that's I'll happening. Pro- I'll be watching this maybe on Sunday morning or something. If Sunday I- morning, there's no doubt when you need them. Oh, and then the other news that no one really cares about. Uh, Conor McGregor said he's been offered a coaching role for the next season of Ultimate Fighter. Nah, didn't he just fall off his bike or something? I thought I yeah, we have video. You do? Fantastic. Yep. What do you about it? Seriously. It's really loud. Uh, uh, mate, that's nice. That's fucking hot. We could have been dead there, mate. Look. That guy's at the cream. It could have been dead. Look at my bike. It's perfectly new. Yeah. It's all out of breath. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, but I, we have, there's an alternate angle on that. Oh, no. I'm Hang afraid, on. I'm afraid what you're going to show hey. me. <laughs> totally. 
good. Let me get all this volume set up here. Get the volume right. Twitter, don't do me wrong. Here's the alternate angle. Da 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 da. It's the motherfucking DOW. Oh. <laughs> da, 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 da. Let's see that one again. It's the motherfucking DOW. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> anyway <laughs> that was pretty good mm. yeah so i don't know who you're supposed to coach against that's uh the thing like you put him on that show who the fuck is he coaching against i don't know hubby but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and not fight but they'd yeah. fight yeah I think I think the rumor was Tony Ferguson, but again, who who gives a shit? Does anyone care? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, no one cares. What else is going on? Well, congratulations to Mr. Kobe Covington for his 50th clean test under the USADA program. Here he is with looking happy, happy guy, happy life, you know. Yeah. That's such a weird thing that we're still playing this USADA thing. I thought we were just going to do that for a little bit and just say, hey, everyone's clean or mostly clean. And then let's let's just go back to normal. But apparently we're just going to ride that off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. I saw Box Media just said they're going to shut down Bloody Elbow. Whoa. Okay. Why? Uh, It's hard to make money running a website, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know? So, so that sucks because I mean, back in the day, like Cage Potato came and went. Now you have Bloody Elbow. I mean, the only thing that Bloody Elbow was good for is they didn't give a fuck about press pass or anything. They were like the only MMA site that was willing to run controversial articles that were against the norm of uh, fucking UFC. None of these other sites are going to run anything controversial. Mm-hmm. Everyone else just sucks dick because they want to they want to be in the good graces of the UFC and if you ask any tough question at the press conference oh bye bye press pass bye bye coming to see anything so that kind of sucks um i saw they had a couple of new fights announced which weird fights but they're rematching the Alex Pahea and Israel Adesanya too Okay. And then they're also going to do Gilbert Burns versus Jorge Masvidal. Oh, nice. Okay. I don't remember when those are supposed to go off, but weird fight. Uh, the first rematch. I mean, Israel was doing good for parts of that fight, but then he just got caught. Um, but I think Alex is in his head because how many wins does he have over him? This will, like I think, nine hundred. <laughs> right. like all the He's wins. living in his head right now. Yeah, he set up a fucking house. He's got a mansion inside he does. Israel's head. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then the the Masvidal Burns fight. I I just I don't get that matchup. I feel like you're wasting a Masvidal fight. I think Masvidal Masvidal is probably should be fighting Connor. Like I oh, feel like it, I those two feel should like, coach against each other. Great. Maybe with the BMF title on the line or something, yeah, some yeah. fake title for Connor to fucking win again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. What else is going on? I uh, just saw Charles Oliveira posted an update on his uh, new back tattoo. I don't know if you saw this one. Looking Let me away. guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's Oliveira. <laughs> it's a, it What's my Oliveira. name? And you got the lion here, and it's got the shoot Great. the box Diego Lima kind of thing. So solid, it's solid like work. Showtime. That must have took forever, but good for him. Yeah, it looks painful. Yeah, it looks like a lot of work. Well, at least it's on the back. I would just, I would go to sleep. Like I remember having so much dental work down, I was falling asleep in the chair really? while they're drilling my teeth out. Yeah, because there was one point from you know us just being kids and they would always put those metal fillings in my dentist was like yeah we should probably take all those out and put the white fillings in whatever those are so they did that and i had such a bad reaction to the white fillings that my teeth were so sensitive for months i'm like we gotta get these out and put the metal back in because i'm having like they my teeth will not calm down so like cold 
and he like I was having super sensitivity. So I had to go back in and he had to re-drill them all out and then put metal back in. Oh god. I, I was falling asleep in the chair because I had just gone through like two hours of them drilling everything out and then another two hours of them re-drilling them all out. And I literally fell asleep. <laughs> that's crazy with that's with no drugs either i'm like i'm just fucking tired man this is annoying yeah so they did, they and, did it with no drugs well i mean just the uh, the numbing no, but not okay. like uh they're not sedating me oh, to make okay. me tired gotcha. you know okay i thought you meant like, <laughs> i didn't even have novocaine no i'm crazy. not that fucking <laughs> stupid <laughs> i'm stupid but i'm not like retarded stupid yeah that's wild uh i saw this picture i don't know <clears throat> what's going on with dana white but uh, i fucking got the weird link here but let's see if i can find his tweet i'm gonna kind of scroll through some shit but he's looking a little rough of late <laughs> here it is so just uh i think i can just show this picture without playing anything but does he not look ill? He looks a little ill. Well, I think he lost a bunch of weight, and his yeah. face. I feel like when you're older and you and you you lean out, like your wrinkles show more, you know, because your face yeah. is like that. Must out. be what's going on. So yeah, he he looks like he aged. That's a common thing. Yeah. So and maybe he's just sick, but I don't know if it's all the drama with what had been going on in the past. But anyway, stress, lots of stress, stress. Like, am I gonna get fired? And I think that's what's weird too, because I was talking to my brother about it. Like, what other commissioner or league could you have what happened to Dana of him like slapping his wife in retaliation of him being slapped? Any other commissioner, any other league, don't they get fired on they the do. spot? On yeah. the spot immediately. This is the only one. He gets He's away like with everything. One. He can do anything he wants. Say anything. He's he like wants the mafia. To. Yeah, you can just do whatever. It's all good. I mean, we've it's been that way since day one. Exactly. The only time he actually behaved was right before the big uh, like buyout because he was like trying to make sure he got. Then he yeah, like, and I think that's th that might have been when all those fire fighters were getting fire fired. So maybe that's like right when Frank Mir said that shit and got fucking shit canned and then probably yeah. Miguel Torres was tweeting shit and he got fired. Yeah, that was probably right around the same time. Mm -hmm. I saw Luke Rockhold was saying he wants to fight Jake Paul. <laughs> How do really... you think that one goes? Not well. I yeah. think Luke Rockhold gets KO'd, I, I think. Yeah, Unfor I unfortunately. And they said Jake Paul is supposed to uh, – he's got another boxing match set up against Tommy Fury. I know Fury flaked out the other time they had a fight set up. But now they said they have Mike Perry set up as the backup. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like, Mike Perry will give him all he can eat if that happens because mm -hmm. Mike beat fucking MVP in bare knuckle boxing. Oh, so yeah. Mike, Mike's a fucking brawler. Like, he'll fuck you up. So I like Mike's chances if he gets in there. Cause again, when you think about who Jake fights, it's typically past their prime UFC guys, not like a brawler, like Perry, who's still like serviceable as a fighter, you know? I don't think he wants any part of that. That's no. So no. we'll see what else is happening. Uh, I discovered this uh, new, um, I don't, I, you tell me what this is. I'm not really sure, but it looks interesting to me. This is uh, basketball meets uh, wrestling, apparently. Okay, sort of, they're wearing their singlets. Of, yeah, and, and there's there's teams. And no dribbling. There's, there's no dribbling. There's layups, right? But then there's... when this is like, oh, they, <laughs> when you get the rebound, you got to watch out. And somehow these guys can now unlock, but there's also no out of bounds, it appears. Um, there's a lot of layups, missed layups. And, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. These are like guys that have never shot a basketball in their know, life. Just, just mean, throw it up. Yeah. So say, you know, we've it's it's more of the same, but they're very short too. <laughs> you get the idea. I'm not sure what maybe this is like former wrestlers need something to do. Yeah. But, uh, but um it looks like it's in Russia somewhere. You know, those crazy Russians. They look Russian. And there's a lot of guys on the sidelines. So I feel like 
A lot of dudes watching some dude action. Some dude tagging in and dude. tagging out. I saw uh, Jamal Hill had a response to Yuri Pokryich, or however the fuck you say his last name, that call out from last week. So he's got a little response for him. But where you at, though? <laughs> where you at, though? And by the way, that's what she said. That's what she said! I don't know. <laughs> okay. I like the first part. I didn't like the second part. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. He's wearing the belt. He can do whatever he wants. So. Yeah, he's a champion for now. He's the champion. You know, Yuri never lost it, so mm-hmm. still a champ. Let's see some uh, Thailand training here. Hey, up! Hey, 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 I don't know how hard those are, but it can't feel great. Ba- bamboos. Yeah. It sounds like it hurts, but they're so conditioned to just fucking whack that shit. The meat's coming out, man. That's like a life, lifetime. Lifetime yeah. of conditioning. I'm thinking about the guy holding too. That can't feel good for him either. No, it's it's on both of them. Because yeah. just because you have the pads doesn't mean you don't feel the fucking impact of shit. It hurts. Yes, yep. it hurts. It's painful. Uh, I got one more thing, uh, mm-hmm. maybe to add to the KO of the week. If, sure. Uh, if we're I don't. Th- I don't know if I have any. So but here we go. Here's ahead. Joe Perez versus Drew Lopez. A little amateur action from Fury, fighting championship. Get a nice little, what do you call it, crescent kick? And then (laughs) then he took another kick right to the face. Solid finish. Nice. Uh, Hit the mat with the back of his head. Those always scare me. The back of the head thing. Yeah. It's just like, ugh, looks bad. And every time I know, like, I'm watching, like, a KO video, I never know who's going to be the KO or or the KOE. Mm -mm. I always try to guess. I'm like, okay, I'm looking because you only have like five seconds to make a educated choice or decision on what you see. And I'm probably wrong all the time on these little short clips. It's very hard to guess. Hard to know. It's a, a bare knuckle. I don't know who this is. Something like bare knuckle boxing. They tweeted this out like a nice little hand injury. Like, look oh. at this nub. Dude. <laughs> Jesus, That's painful. Somehow it looks like a uh, body part on Paige Van Sant. I'm not sure which one. She's been puffing up. It's the moose knuckle. Yeah. I think it. And speaking of which, that thing is beat up. <laughs> if you look out, there's pictures. That shit is beat up. Anyway. Oh, so <clears throat> here's another thing I was wondering. So, uh, you know, I'm looking around at all these posters in my weight room here of all the pretty old UFCs. And then I was just thinking about the glory days of the UFC going, man, think about all the times where the fighters would be just juiced out of their mind and you have your own sponsors, your own shorts and all the one dimensional fighters like uh, Paul Harris or who's that one guy, Paul Sass, who had the fucking just beat everybody by triangle. And do you think we ever will get back to a point where any of that happens again? Like, I don't, I can't even think of any one dimensional fighters anymore. I mean, no. yeah, there's jujitsu guys like, uh, who is it? Ryan Hall. Yeah. But I mean, he, he's got enough stand up to just be serviceable. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't think, I think the guys are too well-rounded now as a base. It's, you have to have some wrestling, some, boxing some some kicks whatever and be able to you know do some yeah no i don't i don't see that happening i I just don't i I think we're past that point unless something new comes out like some new art form that we're not aware of like or a guy (laughs) capoeira he's just gonna come out and dance dance fight you to death they change the rules somehow but no, I, I think you have to be well-rounded as a base and then you can specialize in stuff. But I think it mixed martial arts has truly become mixed. It's no longer like... Yeah, it's it's less fun though because it was fun when you had a guy and you knew like, this is his gig, man. Like Paul Harris, like if he gets your leg, you're kind of fucked. I'd say 90% probably success and you you might not walk again. Cause he ain't, he's taking that shit home, man. 
Yeah. I miss those days of just the specialist and guys juiced out of their minds and cool shorts, iconic shorts. You always knew. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's the Iceman. He's got the fucking Iceman on his shorts. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't think we get back to that either. I saw the underground had a cool article. They're talking mm-hmm. about the increasing number of female MMA fighters opening only fans. And they, they put a list out of all the MMA fighters, female MMA fighters, and what they're charging. So you can kind of get a gauge here. As I'm gonna block these ads out later, but anyway, Whoa. so you can see uh, some people are charging twenty six sixty nine, twenty three, twelve fifty, fifteen ninety nine. Jessica, I trying to charge thirty dollars a month. Come on, lady! Like the ones that are worth looking at are charging nine ninety nine a month. So like Pearl Gonzalez, I don't know about Fleece hearing, but uh, Valerie Lareda. Rachel Ostovich, Paige Van Zant, and then where's the other one? Katrina Lehner. She's doing some uh I don't know how to describe it. Interesting work on the behind <laughs> um to completion, if that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. So I mean, there's your list. Let me check that out. Ladies are doing work. It's quite. The it's the Lord's work. <laughs> I wonder what the, what the game is. Is it sheer volume or is it sheer or is, or is it high price? I'm not sure. What's uh, I don't know because, like, if you looked at Paige Van Zant, you should be shocked at what you'd see. I'm like, she's she's full nude. Would I be surprised? No, you would not. <laughs> but yes, yes, you would. Okay. Based on how it looks, I don't know how to say everything politely. But, and then, you know, you contrast this. Here's Chris Cyborg doing her version of OnlyFans. Uh, when my fighting career finishes, I might have a future as a lumberjack. You can watch the full video on uh, my OnlyFans. Chris Cyborg, I don't want to see you jacking off a tree. Huh. I, don't, I don't know, Ingo. I'm very confused by these ladies and how they do. She's, she's Brazilian. She doesn't understand how it works. Yeah. yeah, the only fans that is. So here's Christina Lenar. She's I think I've shown some similar picture, but that's just her doing uh pad work. So she gets yeah. it. Uh-huh. Or Katrina Lenar, sorry. She's doing work, and then you know, Valerie Lareda is in she's doing wrestling now. So someone made this post of her doing wrestling. Uh, I will just share the post. Hey now. Yeah, she's doing work. And then uh I want to pose it and I want to point out like look at this guy in the background. He's like he's, he's like gay. Where are the guys at? <laughs> Not happy about the action here. No, so probably eating a pickle. <laughs> probably got one up his can too. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's where you put pickles and go. Mm-hmm. Uh you got your knowledge for the week. I do. I watched this documentary over the weekend on HBO. If you're at yes. all into this kind of thing, um, right here is the called Navalny. Um, it's okay. uh, it's about the guy from Russia who tried to oppose, um, what's his face? Damn it, Putin. Brand, Putin that's it. Yeah. Uh, and then the, they have it's the documentary uncovers the systematic way that the Russian government basically tried to have him killed by poisoning him with some crazy ass point. And he had to be extradited to Germany, but they couldn't get him out. Like the whole thing is just insane to me. And I think he's still incarcerated now because they, he went back after he got out and he was trying to like change things. And, you know, now he's become some sort of martyr, but it's just crazy to me to think like in this day and age, like you can blatantly do that. Um, So if you want to the country, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're at all interested in that kind of stuff, like it's a like an just over an hour. It's it's really in, just it's a cool the way it's done, and they literally get people like on video with you know 
I don't want to give it all away, but they, it's it's clear that it was the Russian government. Very clear. Well, I was going to say, it's weird that he didn't slip and fall out a window because that seems to happen all the time in Russia with the guys yeah. that have problems. Poisoning doesn't work very well, but slipping and falling out a window happens all the time. It totally does. accidental. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> guys just disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, I, you know, I was telling you about the Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. So just I was playing it some more. Yeah, and it, it totally reminds me of a, it's a combination of Witcher 3 and Red Dead Redemption with okay. more of like Red Dead Redemption, but if you were a fucking Viking. <laughs> so uh, okay. it's, it's insane because you can, you can fish, you can hunt, you can ride your horse, you can train the horse so your horse can swim so I don't have to fucking get in my boat to go around. And it's still one of the coolest things. Like you want to raid like a settlement, you'll get in your Viking ship with like eight to 10 of your Vikings and you can put like six of them. You can <clears throat> buy like certain Vikings want to be in your group and they'll show up on your docks and you're like, okay, I want that guy in my group or that lady. And then they'll come on the boat with you and then you ride up and fucking raid a settlement and then as soon as you roll up, your guy blows his fucking ale horn. <laughs> and fucking all the nice. Vikings get out and just go to town and fucking kill everybody. The, the only downside is I wish it was a little more like Grand Theft Auto. Because sometimes I want to just fuck a whole village up and kill the women and the children. But if you kill one person, it's like you're going to get desynchronized. Like that's the only part I don't like about the Assassin's Creed series is that whole like... You're supposed to be like a regular person going back in time, like in a fucking dream state and then becoming wh whoever this person is. So, right. Uh, still pretty fucking cool. Skill tree is a fucking nightmare because it's, it's not linear. It's almost like you're looking at a map of the stars and you can't see everything. So oh, I'm wow. just kind of randomly picking shit to level up. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I want, but um and then it got really weird too because there's like the gays are in it so <laughs> and there's nothing oh, wrong with being gay but <clears throat> when you're playing a viking story so to <clears throat> like earlier in the uh, one of the missions like i was talking to some dude and he's like hey do you, you want to go lay down with me i'm like what the fuck is this guy talking about like no uh, i do not want to go lay down with you and then <clears throat> today like or last night I was playing it and some fight happened. And then one of the things was like, uh, oh, you're pretty strong. And there was a heart next to it versus like one of the three or four things I could say. I'm like, or you fought pretty strong. And I picked that. And that was like me trying to pick the dude up. So like, I like gave him like a, you're pretty strong. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I believe in Viking times. If you did weird. some shit like that, I think you would be leaving and you'd be leaving without a head. Like, yeah. I don't think Vikings play that kind of shit. I don't know. Maybe but... they, they get lonely on the battlefield. They do, but I got to figure out how to fix that because now I, I think I have a boyfriend. I don't know. I think I fuck myself. I think I'm the gay Viking now. Fuck. Uh... I, I'm like, I can't be running around raping and pillaging as the gay Viking. It just it doesn't work. You could. I'm very upset about this. Uh... Anyway, so let's talk a couple other things. I'll, I'll cleanse the palate. So I don't know who tweeted this one. Out. It's the Southland Southland Post. I think I got to turn the volume off. So this is a joker on stage with a girl doing work on the mic. That, that probably gets us banned from everything. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of awkward. That is really weird. So I don't know. I saw that. We got two more. <laughs> I like to shove these in at the end. And it, this was weird because we had, there was another set of t shirts that implied this last week, but now they officially did it. My husband shot his coming to my pussy. I'm the cum man. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Remember that was like the caption yes, of was. that. It's like, I'm the cum man cruising around king of the town. Always got my windows rolled down. I'm the cum man. Cum man. 
that's right. Mm-hmm. And then the last one, I think I think it goes along with that one. It might be. There's a lot of a lot of love going around. It's like I want to come in your heart. See, I feel like I fit right in. I'm like I'm I'm the gay Viking. Uh, I want to. I'm the come man, and I'm coming in everyone's heart. I have right. a, I have a gift for you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fucking techno Viking, <laughs> gay as fuck, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's like, give me the water. I will drink to Just water. wait till the beat drops. I, like, I, let I me take wanna, a sip. I don't want to do the beat in case that totally gets. No, I'll drop it in a second here. Here he goes. <laughs> what a call! What a call! <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. He's off to the races. That's you in the game, isn't it? Uh, fuck yeah! <laughs> That's, That's how so I weird. roll now. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna strip my guy naked and just start fucking whacking off. Like, and they're like, "What is that guy? Are you raiding?" No, I'm. I'm fucking myself over here. I'm fucking jacking my wife. Shit. Comes down. And you're like, "What are you doing down there, man?" Like, I'm playing this game. Why I've got, I've got three boyfriends. In this apparently, tub of Vaseline. What's happening? Now, I didn't know uh, that I was gay. Apparently, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Discovered it through a video game. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Got three, oh. I got 17 uh, boyfriends. I'm the gay Viking now. Oh, love me. Love That's me. Funny. I'm going to come in your house <clears throat> or your heart. Hey, on that note, shut it down. We're going to hell. That's been this week's edition of Heaven. Oh, That's my name's Ingle Michael. <laughs> Matt Griffith. Thanks for playing.